I was thinking about heading down to that logging camp, clear out those nests. I've been seeing more freaks up here. A boozer? No, no, you're gonna get yourself killed. Uh, you gotta wait till you're whole, brother. Uh, I'm over here anyway, so I'll take care of the nests, okay? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Dee. Here, yep. Son of a bitch! Okay, one nest done. How many more you got? Oh, warehouse. Yeah, it looks like the kind of place you want to call home, yeah? God damn it, what you all shit yourself at once? Jesus Christ. Oh, goddamn freaks. What the hell are you doing? Get down. Life in the freak show. Hey, never better. It's gonna get cold tonight. Yeah, I can feel it. I gotta get some sleep. Yeah, okay.
getting light out. Jack used to say the best alarm clock was the sun shining on chrome. Jack used to say a lot of stupid shit. Hey, you doing okay? Been better. Arm feels like it's gonna fall off. You heading out? Hey, I can... It's just... I'm, I'm going stir-crazy up here, you know? All right, listen, I was heading down that way anyway. I'm gonna take care of them nests, all right? Damn it. Vagrants. We'd just as soon shoot you as look at you. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go see if I can get some sleep. How do you like that? Huh? Come on, you sons of bitches, come on! It'll warm you up. では、解説、ウィラノさん、そしてジョンさんお願いします。はい、えっと、最初にプレイしていただくところはこれはまあストーリーモードという部分なんですが、これは実際のゲームのストーリーの序盤の方ですね。えっと、先ほど一緒にパ
All right, so this is uh, one of the early wide linear missions, and Deacon's job is to get to the gas station, try to find a part for his bike. So, this is the part that I've been talking about, the bike parts of the bike. I'm going to go to the gas station. Go on. As we'll you know, see, see sometimes the fastest way there is not the safest. So, this is the part that I've been talking about. 短いルートが毎回いいとは思えません。Here we see one of our enemy types that I mentioned earlier, the newts. They stay on rooftops and will only attack you if you're low on health or if you climb up onto a roof, which is their territory. 先ほどちょっと見えたのがヌートというフリーカーのも屋根の上にいるそうですね。ですよね。はい。ちょっと小柄で結構あちらも普通通常はそれほど危なくないんですが、えっとディーコンの体力がすごい低い時など、えっと彼らのテリトリー屋根の上とかに登るとえっと攻撃してきます。弱ってても攻撃してくれるんですよね。そうですね。弱ってる。通常はな優しいんだけどっていう。優しく優しくはないですね。はい。So he's climbing up onto this tractor trailer so that he can use his binoculars and look at the environment, see where the enemies are, see where he needs to go, and kind of get a lay of the land. まあこうやって双眼鏡を使って周りをえーと見渡してどういう地域なのかどういう敵が周りにいるかをちょっと今確認しています。雨が降ってきました。そうですね。雨もすぐ降ってきますね。Here he sees. The interior of a building. All of our interiors can be searched, so it's an open-world game with a vast exterior, but you can also go inside the buildings and scavenge for supplies. So, the open world is this. This is all the house, garage, and other buildings. Suddenly, he sees a nest. So, if you see rooms that have all of these. Branches. These are these are areas where freakers hibernate during the day. 今えっとはい火炎瓶を投げた場所ですけど。燃やしましたね。はい。そこにがフリーカーの巣ですね。いろいろ枝がえっと飛び出しているのが見えると思いますが、そういうえっと枝が飛び出しているところにえっとまあそれがフリーカーの巣というところです。それを燃やしながらどんどんえっとフリーカーも増えてえっとで登場してくると思います。なるほど。あそこがフリーカーの巣だったんですね。はい。そうです。うわあ、激しいやっぱり。So he made so much noise that that attracted all these swarmers, and now he's got to run. Ah, so this. And now, the noise of 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 the noise もうあの体力がえっと左下に見えると思います。今緑のゲージですね。低くなったのでミュートが降りてきて攻撃しに来てます。あ、そういうことなんですか。ああやられた。ああ。え？ Create as much noise。ちょっとさっきは失敗しましたが、でもいろいろなルートを探ってえっとまあ目的地まで行きますので、ちょっと今度は違うルートで行ってみましょう。はいはい。気を抜くと結構ねやられちゃいますね。そうですね。すぐまあ音を立てるだけでもやっぱ寄ってくるので結構気をつけないといけません。Police vehicles are very important in the game because they're like treasure chests. You can almost always find ammo in them. こういうえっと捨てられたえっと車のトランクなどがまあある意味宝箱みたいなもんですね。それを開けることでいろいろと貴重なアイテムをえっとゲットすることができます。なるほど。トランクに結構。アイテムがいいのがいいのというか重要なものが入っているということですね。はい、そうです。今も先ほど銃弾がえっといくつかえっと手に入ったと思います。これ建物の中にもいろいろやっぱアイテムがあるということですか？あります。まあそういう意味でもあのフリーカーの数をえっとクリアしてその建物に入れるようにするのも一つの手。なるほど。さあ入りました。ここのは安全っぽいですね。でもこのようにいろいろとアイテムを拾うことで後でクラフトして自分のまあアイテムをえっとまた装備をえっと充実にさせることができます。クラフトもこれまた重要になってくるわけですね。はい、重要になります。お、な何するんですか。お、投げた。So he just threw a rock at that car, which has a working car alarm, and it used attracted all the swarmers to it. 
あ、今、えー、とちょっと見えにくかったかもしれませんけど車に、えー、とちょっと赤い点滅がありました。それはアラームがついている車ということでそこに石を投げて、えー、と音をアラームを鳴らしてそこに、えー、と引き寄せました車が音が出るから、はい、そ,そこで音を出してフリーカーを呼び寄せているというそうですねその間に、えー、ともうここは、えー、と今敵がいないのでああなるほどなるほどおーおーおーおー<笑>ドキッとしますねそれまあ環境にもいろいろ爆発物なのもあるのでいろいろと,まあえと何がえと利用できるかというのを探し出すのもえと一つの点ですね。そして、クレイジー・ウィリーのガレージの目的地のポイントですがえとちょっとドアがロックされて。まあ、どうやってこの中に入るかそれはまあ体験版でもここでプレイして皆さんにちょっと楽しんでいただければなと思いますこの先は皆さんがぜひ自分で体感してああもう見えてますなんか見えてるこれですねそうですねこれがフリーカーうじゃうじゃいますよ確かここでハムニーがフリーカーソーティー I think this is a smaller horde so this is 250300300一応300体300人のフリーカーがここにいます300いるとで一応目的はその全てを倒すことなのですが、あのー、上の画面でゲージ赤いゲージがありますねはいはい中央上のゲージですね、はい、それが、えーとまあ、残りの、えー、と人数ですがおお、えーはい、爆発さ倒すことでどんどんゲージが減っていきますただ音も立てて騒ぎを起こしたことでどんどんどんどんうわっ怖っ<笑><笑>わうわすごいっすねはいでまあ、この子にもいろいろと捨てられた車もありますしあとはバイク、今回はここではストーリーモードでなかったバイクにも乗ることができます、はい、であともう一つが、あのー、もう中盤なのでいろいろと罠を仕掛けることもできるし、えー、と装備しているものも割と充実していますそういうところもちゃんと利用していただきたいと思いますねこれが先ほど紹介していただいた重要な、はいまあ、ある意味キーともなるバイクですね。はいバイクですなんかバイク乗るのもなんか気持ちよさそうですね気持ちいいですねドリフトとかもできますよやっぱこうね舞台が大自然なのでいいですねそうですね移動の手段としては絶対に必要な乗り物になりますでこのようにまあバイクをどこの位置に、えー、と置いとくかによっても、えー、と最終的には自分がここに逃げてバイクでさらに逃げられることがというのも作戦の中に入れるのは重要ですバイクの止める場所も重要とおっと何かを何をしているところでしょうかここは、はい、罠を設置して、まあ後でちょっと使うんでしょうねそれをまあ何か設置したと罠を、うん、あとバイクが重要なのも一回死んだらそこが、えー、とチェックポイントとなってそこでまた復活することになりますうんうんうんなるほどお次はどこに設置するんですかここはなんか意図があるんですかね、今置いた場所というのは。そうですね、今、えー、と設置しているポイントを決めて、えー、とそこに誘導しながら、まあ、逃げ自分も逃げて爆発物を、えー、発火するという作戦ですね。あと、こういう燃料タンクも置いてあります、うん、それは実際に銃で撃って大きな爆発を起こすこともできるし、今、罠をそこに設置したので、はいはい、そこの近くに行くと,、えーとまあ、フリーカーたちが爆発する。爆発するとやっぱ設置した場所しっかりと頭に入れとかないとそうですね,ですよねちゃんとせ作戦通りに行かないということですね、はい、それでどうのルートを通っていくかを、うんはい、頭に入れながらさおお来た来たうわ来た<笑>うわ大丈夫かな大丈夫ですかジェクさんうわジェクさん大丈夫ですかうわ来てる来てるすごい数あと今あのちょっとスクリーン画面がえーとちょっとグレーになったと思うんですけどそれはフォーカスモールでその間だけえーとスローモーションでえーとものが起こるようになりますそれは中盤になってから半分いますねもうあ結構半分ぐらい半分六十パーセントぐらい残り六十ぐらいあ先ほど仕掛けたものなるほど
マルタのところ一つ武器としてもナパーム火炎瓶というのが作ったというのですがああここで爆発させて結構いいところまでわーあーでもいいですね素晴らしいジェフさんジェフさん素晴らしいです障害物とかを、えー、と抜けることで、まあ、彼らの動きを遅く、まあ、遊べることもできますどういう状況なんでしょうかどちらにしろやっぱりもうずっと逃げ回って動き回ってないとダメですねすぐ捕まっちゃうのでああいいですいいですもう迫ってきてる大丈夫ですかなんとかなんとか<笑>浦野さんこれいけそうですかねいけるんじゃないですかどこかで。さあ冷静なジェフさん大丈夫でしょうかライブでお届けしておりますあと体力ゲージの上が、まあ、青,く青いゲージなんですそれがスタミナですねそれで、えーとまあ、走ることができるそのゲージがなくなったらもう走ることもできる結構今ギリギリなところですがあーっとさあお客さんもドキドキしてまいりましたジェクさん頼むライブショーしっかりと成功してほしいですただもうあとわずかですねそうですねあともうあとは銃で倒せるぐらいだとまでいってるでしょうかうわー<笑>ここは油断できないですねそうですねもうあでももうちょいああと2回ぐらいよしすりゃすりゃ最後はボッコボコにして拍手お願いしますよし Anything that happens here is far better than what's going on out there. St. John, like,、um, what, was, what was the inspiration behind this character? Well, a few things. He's, he's broken. So, you saw from a couple of trailers that we've released that he's lost someone and it scarred him in a way. And, it, and it's like Jeff would like to say,、right. we all, everybody loses people、yeah. you know, in these kinds of end of the world scenarios. So, what, what's particular about Deacon, though, is that he was an he was a ex member of an outlaw motorcycle club. And therefore, he has a love of the open road. He has a love of motorcycles. Yeah. There's a sense of brotherhood, and you can see that here in these scenes with him and his best friend, Boozer.、Um, and so it was that combination that, we really, that really sort of drew us to this particular character. Right. We're going to continue to learn about him as you're playing the game, correct? About him and his backstory and why he is the way he is.
I mean, the bike is very important, right, as well, like... Yeah, we almost consider the bike to be another character. Yeah. Because you only get one, and you're constantly upgrading it, you're constantly trying to repair it, you need to keep it refueled, and if you lose it, you gotta go find it, and you gotta, and you, you know, you can't whistle for a new one, so... <laughs> you can't whistle, yeah. right? Like a horse. <laughs> yeah, the refueling mechanic is a huge game design choice. I really, really like that. Can you talk more about how important it's gonna be to be able to find fuel? Sorry. <laughs> so the refueling mechanic, and actually, you have to find gas to keep your bike going. It's a mechanic we haven't really seen done to this extent before. Can you talk more about that and how it changes the gameplay? Well, like, in this demo, one of the things that Jeff, Jeff's taking the run-and-gun approach, so we, we like to call it um, uh, sandbox combat. So basically what you can do is you can run-and-gun, you can stealth your way through, and you, your goal here is to get and find a bike part, right? So. You're here actually for kind of a trivial reason. You've risked your friend's life to come and get a part for your bike. And so that shows a little bit about Deacon's character. But then as, as you watch Jeff play through, through this wide linear sequence, um, he can play it a hundred different ways. And if you watch other people play, you'll see that, okay, they didn't take this route. They didn't stop and check the trunk of this police car. Um, and those are kind of like our treasure chests throughout the world. So you're always on the lookout for those because that's how you're gonna find ammo and health kits. And then you're seeing one of our stealth mechanics here. If you're quiet, if you, if you crouch walk, and you walk up behind an enemy, then you have the opportunity for a stealth takedown. And what can you tell us about the Freakers? Because they're quite, quite unique. I and mean, we've seen you know, a fair few undead enemies in video games before. What makes the Freakers unique? And what, and what was your decision making behind making them the way they are? They're alive. They're alive. <laughs> yeah. They're not zombies. They're alive. And so that, that, you know, that sounds trivial, but it's not, because it basically means we have a full day-night cycle in the game. Right. And they have, si they have things that they do. They have, there's an ecosystem. And they have to eat, they have to drink, they have to hibernate. And so you will find them, like in, in this scenario, you'll see that there's some nests, and Freakers build nests um, for reasons you discover while you're playing the game. And then you can take those nest zones out in order to free up fast travel routes. Um, so you know, it becomes part of the metagame. But Freakers are evolving. They're living right. creatures who have been affected by this, by this virus. And there's several different types. And some of our trailers you've seen, we've shown the Screamer, which is a female that can have sort of alarm system that will bring in more Freakers. Right. We have uh, the infected bear, so it, it, affect, it infects animals. In our last trailer, we showed the Mountain crows, lion and the crows. Right? So yeah. you have, yeah, so, the, you know, so it's just, it, it's a wide variety of challenges for the player. And like we said, the world comes for you, and that's part of it is that these creatures are always after you, and at night they're stronger. Yeah. If it starts raining, they become stronger. But we've seen him, I've seen in previous trailers, uh, Deacon actually utilizing the Freakers as a weapon against his enemy as well. So you can actually use them to your advantage as well, as well as the environment itself. Yeah, absolutely. We call it the Freako system. So in this scenario, there's not a lot of chance for that. But if he were fighting marauders or rippers, right. then he could find a nearby swarm. It's an open world, so you can just explore. You can find other tools like you know, like a, like a swarm or a freaker bear, and you can bring them into an enemy right. camp and watch the, you know, watch the sort of mayhem that, that happens. I guess you've got to be careful, though. You don't you get kind of sucked ready. into it. Yeah. <laughs> I like this gun, you guys. Well, so you have melee combat and you have gun combat. Can you talk about how you designed and balanced for both? The, uh, you know, it's like so many different scenarios require the player to determine how they want to play it. Right, so that's why we have like this full set of stealth mechanics. Um, we have a full set of weapons that you can upgrade, and you ha in order to do that, you have to go to the human encampment. So there's there's survivor encampments in the world, the only places in the world where it's safe, and you have to do jobs and missions with them in order to um, to earn trust. And then once you earn trust, the the merchants there will sell you. Them. Ah, I like that. And then they, you know, it's like, and if you want to upgrade your shotgun, or you want to upgrade, or you want to buy a silencer for it then you have to have enough trust at that encampment in order to do that. Boozer, you there? I found the part. I'm heading oh, got the bike part. He's not having a good time. This is the inside of the Crazy Willie's truck stop, and that's one of the other things we wanted Rippers. to point out is that Boozer. it's full open world, but there is, you, it, there's a lot of exploration in the game. All of the building interiors are accessible. There's no load times to get in and outside of a building or to go between regions. This is in the Belknap Wilderness, um, and the whole area is just completely explorable. 
And then these are the Rippers that I mentioned earlier. So these are one of the cults in the game. These are dead symbols of a dead man. Dead symbols of the lost. Get off me! The bitches fight for man. You must be brought low, biker man. For you are lost, and we are found. Oh yeah, that's gonna hurt. So you can see they're not very friendly. No. <laughs> You've talked about having freedom in terms of how you approach missions. So you can you can approach them stealthily. You can go in all guns blazing if you want to. Um, what kind of freedom do you have in terms of the mission structure? In terms of the story? Can you do you get to make story choices in the game, or is it like sort of like a linear narrative path you're going to be taking? Yeah, there's there's several key places where you have to choose. Um, what Deacon is going to do in a key situation. So we, re right. we released a bunch of footage last month, and if you watch carefully, you'll see that there's a moment where Deacon has the choice to take a man's life or to force Boozer to do it. Right. And that will have an impact on Boozer's morale. So your best oh. friend, how he feels about you, how here for him. I'm here for you. So you tried doing sort of a stealthy approach, and now you're just going to go in with a shotgun and blow him away. Look at that hit shot. Or baseball bat. That works. Yeah. Can you tell us anything about what has happened in the world? You know, why are we in this post-apocalyptic situation? Like, are you able to reveal, like, kind of what, what has happened, what has led to this transition? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that we really want the player to sort of learn as they go. So there are answers, right? Um, but you have to explore. Uh, there's a, you know, we have, we, we've, we've introduced this group called Nero, which is our national emergency response organization. They're out in the world. They have these MMUs that you're trying to um, break into in order to get medical supplies. They, they're part of the story. And, you know, obviously Deacon has lost somebody. We saw that in a trailer. That's part of the story. And as far as like the pandemic and the hordes that you run into constantly, these all sort of weave together to, to sort of explain where how we got you know yeah. to this place in this world. Cool. Um, and, um, and all kinds of just visual, actual hardware upgrades, mm -hmm. but a ton. You can really make it your own. Awesome. Well, John, Jeff, Chris, thank you so. Come on, get him inside. What happened? I got hit again. Squatters off the highway. We've got to get some men together. Go after them. Look at me, it ain't my problem. They've got Manny. You sent Manny on a supply run. I just run the camp, Deke. I don't tell folks how to live their lives. Go to hell, Cope! Keep it up! Oh, out of the way! Oh, hey, 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 man! Oh, come on. 
this way. Why do you have you always have a bad attitude? You know? I have a bad attitude. I know. I have a bad attitude. Bad attitude. I could we just, even do yeah, it just don't talk. Oh, yes, better if we just don't talk. <coughs> where, yo, where are you at, man? <laughs> Not being that loud, you shut down. Thank you, you shut up. Okay, Shh. I want all of you to shut the hell up. Hey. What is your problem? Oh, sh 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 there's something out there. Just a forest. Stop! 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 My leg! I wasn't gonna let him kill you. Besides, who the hell is around here knows how to rebuild the carburetor? So yeah, I remember. 
I remember when our homes and our towns turned into graveyards. When the wilderness became our only hope for survival. I remember when the planes fell out of the skies. When the trains stopped running. When the turbines shut down and the world went dark. I remember when they put up the razor wire like it was gonna stop anything. When the feds ran out of body bags. When some of us sort of lost our minds. I think it's dead. Some lost more than that. Much more. I remember when we lived by a code when brotherhood meant something, and living meant more than surviving. Goddamn liar! So yeah, I remember how it all went down. No, I don't give a damn about any of that. You know what I remember most? Riding the open road. The smell of your hair. The touch of your skin. I remember you. But those days are gone. Now I'm a drifter, a bounty hunter, a mercenary. And for me, the broken road is all that's left. But I'll always remember. PlayStation. Hello, I'm John Garvin, the writer and director, and I'm here with... Sam Whitwer. I play Deacon St. John in Days Gone. Yeah, and yes. we're here to talk about the alternate path demo. So we did two demos for E3 this year. One you guys saw at uh, the Media Showcase, and this one we showed behind closed doors on, on the floor at E3. And so for the first time, we're releasing it online so that everybody can kind of take a look at it. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about, you know, what the differences are um, and just kind of like just show you what we were trying to accomplish this year. Yeah, I mean, the most obvious difference so far is it's the last one was nighttime during the rain and this is daytime during the snow. Yeah, and that, you know, and, that, and it's not just cosmetic. And I think that's one of the things we really wanted to emphasize, you know, because this, this, this time we're showing sort of a day in the life of Deacon. You see he's on the drifter bike here. Um, we wanted to show a little more of the bike riding and how the weather can kind of impact that. So we have this drifting mechanic, right? You see him right. kind of slipping and sliding around a little Changes bit. Changes the handling of the bike. Um, that's really interesting. Now, there were wolves there last time, John, and these wolves would pursue you down this road, and then Deacon had to turn his back, shoot a wolf, and he got clothesline close right yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So this time you see that he wasn't being chased by the wolves. That's a dynamic event that can just, that just, you know, it's just, a, that can happen or not. It just depends on, on when you're playing the game. Interesting. And this yeah. time Deacon saw the ambush and he was able to avoid it. So he kind of comes up and around and behind so them. So does weather impacts whether these creatures show up or not in daytime, nighttime, all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So especially the freakers, they come out, they're mostly nocturnal, but they will come out as the weather gets colder. They become stronger in the cold. Right. And so that will, you know, again kind of change up the way the game plays that's very very uh i i kind of love that you decided to do this as a demo to show two completely different iterations on the same exact mission in the game yes exactly so we wanted to have uh you know this the job is basically the same deacon hears that his buddy's in trouble mm -hmm. rides out to save his life and you know as you can see here this is a completely different experience from what we showed in the first demo the first one deacon gets clotheslined um, and it sounded very painful, by the way. Oh, that. that looks, speaking of painful, um, okay, so <laughs> the combat in this game is fairly brutal. John, you want to talk about that a little well, bit? Well, we just wanted to make it as, you know, as realistic as possible. So, yeah, we're not holding back on that at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and Sam's done most of his own stunt work for this. And I can tell you that when we're on the performance stage and we're capturing that stuff, we just try to keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we we've, we've been work. I've been work, I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more. What were we? It, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into, hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is. 
a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and and showing the horror of the violence that happens and 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 it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the not just the stunts but also the performance style. I think you know it was very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors. Uh, you know, saying lines it was yeah. all very incidental. And we, you know, we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that, you know, Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm -hmm. And here, I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was, you know, and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes oh, yeah. up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, <laughs> we call this the meat wall. <laughs> the meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary, that's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up. Uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp, like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah, stumbled, that's a, that's an alarm that the marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world, you'll find traps like that and then if you're careful and you're paying attention you can avoid them because in the first demo Deacon didn't avoid it and he set off that alarm right now now this is the same tactic that he used last time throws the rock to get someone to lure lure them over and have them step in the very trap but this one plays out a little bit differently than last time one of the things that, that struck me and we've talked about this obviously as we've shot but there's there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up and he won't yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time we're showing what happened. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, shut up, shut up, shut up, and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. Right. And of course, in the meantime, Deacon you know is crafting a Molotov and just takes them all out. Right. Oh boy, this dude. Ow. Ow. Ah. So yeah, so again, it's like in the pre in the previous demo, Dem Deacon would have gone off to the trail down to the right. This time he's going to head this way. He follows the tracks, uh, and comes under now, a sniper attack. Now let me ask you something about the survival. Okay, there's a sniper attack coming, but uh, the uh, survival vision is if you don't say upgrade your survival vision, can you miss clues? I mean, are there things that that you would get if you upgraded your survival vision yes. that would help you complete the mission better? Exactly, and you have to, you know, we have a whole skill tree and it's all mm -hmm. tied to the experience that you can earn as you're just playing through the game and, and then you can upgrade those and things. What's happening here? We got a freaker tied to a tree. Yeah, so this is another type of trap that marauders will set. They will set, you know, they will basically chain freakers um, to the perimeter of their camps and they use them as kind of an alarm system. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, you know, you saw that marauder there, he was just tormenting the poor freaker and then yeah. so Deacon kind of take it, takes advantage of that. Well, and you think for a moment that Deacon is the guy, he's, he's sort of helping the freaker by, you know, getting the guy that taunted him. Like, no, no. And then he's going to take the freaker out right afterward. Exactly. And this is a bit of uh, silent sniping using the crossbow. Yeah, so this whole sequence at the end plays out very differently. In the first demo, you saw Deacon use a swarm. He weaponized a swarm, lured them into the camp, and then they kind of did the work for him. There's no swarm in this run through. Right. So the player really has to go in and use what we're calling our strategic sandbox combat. And that's just, you know, stealth mechanics and setting and using traps, whole arsenal of weapons. You see, there's a variety of weapons that Deacon's going to use through this, including the crossbow. You know, he crafts his own bolts. Um, and you know he's got to he's got to figure out how to get up to Manny uh, just you know using his combat skills right. instead of doing it strategically. So straight me out those those bonfires were those there in the previous demo? No, they weren't. Right. So that's another big difference is that if you come here during the day, you know it's like in the in the media showcase demo there was like kind of a fight club thing going right, on. Right. They were they were punching each other and everybody was just sort of getting into it. Nobody's really paying yeah, attention it, to what's it, going on. Yeah. And now it's getting dark and it's cold out. So you know they built these bonfires. So. You know, and again, it's just, it, it's not just a cosmetic change in the way the... Well, it's the, cold, right? Yeah, it's, they, it's because it's they cold. They have to build some... So it changes the way the, the, the marauders behave in the level. Mm -hmm. well, that's very, 
again, this is part of the reason why I love that you did this as a demo, because the, the, the behavior of all of these things, not just the freakers, but the marauders, everything, there's a logic to it. You can track why they're doing the things that they're doing, um, and you can use it to your advantage in the gameplay. That's, that's kind of what I like about this so much. That, that, and that's really what we wanted to showcase this year, is that it's an open world game, and you know everything you see around here. And again, we're only playing this two different ways. Um, you saw that waterfall way up there off in the distance. There's a bridge that goes in front of that. If you had a sniper rifle and enough ammunition, you could have driven your bike all the way up there. There's mm -hmm. trails that go all the way up there, and you could have used your sniper rifle to take out this entire camp because it would have taken them a while to figure out where the shots were coming from and to get to you. So you know that's a different way to play. There's another way to play, by the way, where. You could have just stealth in through the entire camp if you had the skills to do it. And you could have just taken everybody out silently or, or almost everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you could have gotten up to where Manny's being held using a different route and, you know, just stealth killed that guy. There's no reason that you have to come in and run and gun it like, um, like Deacon is doing here. Hey, how, how scarce is ammunition? Because I see him switching uh, from a bunch of weapons. And I, when we saw this demo, when I, when I came in and saw day three, one of the things that I that I really enjoyed was I was sitting next to you and the driver was playing the game and at some point I saw you shift in your chair and you leaned forward and I heard you say, oh man, uh oh. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? He's like, he's gonna get killed. Oh, I'm right. like, whoa, oh, <laughs> and I, I, I leaned forward. I was like, oh, I guess there's some real danger. And one of the things was that he was running out of ammunition um, and he was trying to go pick up ammo yes. from the dead uh, He was looking for ammo, marauders, yeah. but but he I've was seen, under fire, so when we were so. in E3, we had a whole team with us, and everybody played it slightly differently. So it just shows you that it's not scripted at all. Yeah. Um, and then this Rager bear. Oh yeah, boy. the infected bear. The infected bear. That's... Yeah, yeah. That's not what you want to see. Well, that, we, thought that would be a, <laughs> we thought that would be a good way to end the demo, is to show that it's just one... For Deacon's life, it's just one darn thing after, after another. another yeah. Right? You're going to save your buddy... You get clotheslined, you get attacked by wolves, or, you know, you, you think you're finally done, you rescued your, you, you know, you've gone through all this stuff, and then suddenly, Rager Bear. Right. Well, as, as you said to me, it's not just about exploring an open world as it is the open world coming after you, the open world seeking you out, trying to... Yeah, exactly. That's our tagline. Um, in Days Gone, you don't have to go seeking out trouble. The world comes for you. Trouble is looking for you. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Thanks, John. It's been fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the demo, and uh, we'll talk more about it soon. Very violent. Yeah. Uh, it showed a lot of sort of situational kind of... Uh, uh, you know, using the, the environment and, yeah. and, and the freakers that we see kind of to, right. to, to the advantage of the player. Yeah. So tell me what, 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 what went into that. Well, so the biggest thing that we really wanted to do this year was yeah. sort of show a more intimate part of Deacon's life. Mm -hmm. So last right. year, we, it was the Horde, which is hundreds and hundreds of freakers all sort of massed together, and you saw how Deacon had to struggle to just stay alive. And this year, we wanted to show off more of the open world and this thing that we're calling our dynamic open world systems. And what that really means is you can use the freakers themselves against other other enemies like the right. marauders that you see on the on the media showcase demo last night. Right. You yeah. Know, actually, I have a question about yeah. the freakers because uh, you know with, with other games, survival games, you know, like like this. First is The Last of Us. Uh, the clickers had this thing where they couldn't see you, but they could hear you. What is it that triggers the freakers? Oh yeah. Well, That's so. Good. It's an interesting question, and for anybody who gets a chance to see our uh, alternate demo that we're demonstrating in the theater today or online when it gets posted, is that time, the time of day, kind of drives the density of the freakers and the humans when they're out, but, but also the weather. So when it's snowing, it's going to kind of blind everybody at a distance. When it's raining, it's going to dampen the sound. So when the player learns these, he's going to be able to use that kind of context as one of, he's going to play that as part of his strategy for how he approaches any, any encounter. Gotcha. But definitely sound, right? Because like you saw in the media showcase demo, uh, Deacon, you know, put down this bear trap and then kind of snuck off. Right. Um, and in our alternate path demo, he doesn't do that. So he actually kind of goes around and watches what happens when this marauder goes into the bear trap. And you hear this gunshot on the media showcase demo. If you look at our alternate uh, path footage, you'll see um, that one of the marauders actually shoots the other marauder in the head because he's making too much noise. Oh wow! Right. So yeah. So it's a pretty harsh. It's a pretty harsh world. But that sound traveled, and sound is like is something that can be really, really dangerous. Gotcha. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I did notice once the bear trap was down and the guy stepped in it, you saw the freakers running. 
Yeah. It's like they heard it screaming. You heard them screaming. Yeah, this is uh, looking good. Um, I haven't seen, I didn't see all of this footage. Uh, I was kind of, I was kind of a little distracted last night during the showcase. But uh, one of the things I really like about this game um, is, is it's, you know, we see a lot of open world games out there. It's certainly like a popular genre, but right. this one, it, it, the, the, the feel of it is different. It's, it feels more improvisational, uh, I think is the word I'm going for. It, it, absolutely. Our crafting system, I mean, it's really inspired by, you know, kind of the do-it-yourself mentality where, yeah. you know, we all feel thrilled when we make a repair to our car or our house with duct tape and a couple of loose screws and we feel really good about it. That, that's Deacon. You know, he's making use of everything he can find in the environment and they have to scavenge and search for things and employ them in really clever ways. That and, he has, and he has to do it. He, he has to do it so, to survive. So and like you, you see right here, these. this is the same little clothesline that Deacon ran into. And in this demo, the runners aren't chasing him. So, so basically he has the opportunity to see the, the ambush before it happens, goes around it, comes up behind them and takes those guys out from behind. Right. So, you know, it's, that's, you know, to yeah. your point. And then he, and he strangles them with their own clothesline, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? right. So he makes use of the whole buffalo in And this it's game. a dynamic event. That can happen. You can be out right. in the world doing a job or a mission, and then suddenly right. you've got marauders that are ambushing you on the highway, and it's a dynamic event. There's no way to predict when it's going to happen. You just got to pay attention. Well, is there, is there more than just like a clothesline in the middle? Is there, do they oh, find yeah. more ways to ambush time. you? Yeah, it's exactly. a da It's a dangerous world, and it's something oh, where, goodness. you know, the, the horde is dangerous, freakers are dangerous, but so too are humans because they're cunning and clever, and they're, they too are using everything they can they can find to employ against their enemies. And, and uh, let's just say clothesline is one of many things. We'll get into it at a later date. Okay, okay. Now, tell me a little bit about maybe a little bit of the backstory about why these freakers are being hung up like this. I'm just, is that like a defense mechanism? Is it? Yeah, a... absolutely. Yeah. So what they do is they we call it the meat wall, and oh. what they'll do is like in this case they have a bear trap under this dead freaker corpse, and what they'll do is they'll put a trap under it, and then as other freakers are attracted to the meat, oh. they're all they're all hungry all the time. That's what happens evidently if you become a freaker. Um, but they, but they hang up the meat walls again. It's kind of like a wall to protect the encampment. So you can always tell when you're coming close to a marauder camp because you'll run into these kinds of traps. Yeah, they had all kinds of defenses too. I mean, the first thing Deacon did was trip over that little thing in the, in the, the, the tin cans. And that's what drew the first guy out, which is why he'd think on his toes, scramble for a bush, and then wait, and then kill the guy when he came by. Right. And it, again, in, in the alternate path that we're showing, is something where if, if the players are thoughtful and if they take time, they don't just rush into things, they're going to be able to employ a, a different analysis yeah. of the terrain. They're going to be able to look for these things and see them. And uh, that's how he sees a clothesline. And when the players are careful and cautious and assume the world's dangerous, they can turn the tables on the bad guys using their same, the same tools that they're using against the player against them. Yeah, it's so like what you're seeing now is, is part of the alternate path. Changed up the time of day, changed up the weather. Okay, now, I was going to say, I didn't remember cold, this on the show. Right. Exactly, yeah. because it's colder okay, now, more beautiful. freakers are coming out, so freakers are stronger ah. when it's cold out. So you oh, interesting. you really got to be careful when it's snowing. Also, yeah. the bike handles differently. It's like if you'd seen the earlier part oh. with Deacon's trying to ride his bike through the snow, it's very, very different. Oh, this is really cool. I didn't, I didn't realize. Interesting. So here's your meat wall, right? Oh, the meat, meat wall, wall there. Yeah. That, that's, that seems like a pretty smart move, if I'm yeah. honest. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, look at this, a beautiful looking game too. And I know you guys are, are digging into the PS4 Pro as well as you make this title. This is what is, is something you have to do. It, it's beautiful enough without 4K. True, and, and then right? you add that to the mix and it's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah. Right, right. You know, one thing that stands out to me about Days Gone, you know, uh, amongst the other undead games out there is that you can get so many zombies on the screen in this thing, or freakers I, <laughs> on the screen at once. Ooh, ah. Those are the ones that, you know, Deacon kind of ran across, you know, then gnawing on somebody's corpse, and then one of them chased him. And the thing about runners is they can outrun your bike. And yes. if they catch up to you, they will knock you from your bike. So it's a, another example of dynamic events that happen in the world that make the world dangerous all the time. Wow, such a cool game you guys are making. It's really inspired. I think it's got a lot of a lot of cool mechanics to it. Uh, you know, it's he's headed to the old sawmill. Going in after him. It's gonna be dark soon. Who knows that would ever stop me? down.
Go on. Get out of here. Get out. Well, that ain't him. Oh, shit.
All right, here we go. We're watching some live gameplay here of Days Gone. I have picked up the controller. I'm looking through the binoculars, and I see trouble. I see yeah. trouble. Lots of trouble. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're looking at about 250 individual horde units right here. This uh -huh. is smaller than the horde we showed at the sawmill a few years ago, but I feel it's a good starter horde for you. And it's really important now. Prepare. So. All right. You just took a bunch of ammo from your saddlebags. So, oh, saddlebags, yeah. cool. Yeah, and this, that's an important upgrade for the bike to prepare you for encounters such as this. All right. When you, when you don't try to kill them with the bike. But since it's a sandbox, I say you go for it. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, off there to it a is. bad start. <laughs> oh, oh, really bad start. Nice job. This is the yeah. world's best demo. I could have done that, dude. Thanks, <laughs> Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is not uh, going to go well. <laughs> oh, man. This is not going to go well. We're going for realism. Okay, so I need a <laughs> separate inversion for on foot and vehicle, I noticed. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's do that. <laughs> We're playing so, it live here. Is that a separate uh, feature? Yeah, it is, actually. Yeah, so press R2 to go to the bike. Ah, uh, display. Oh, sorry. There we go. There All right, there we there go. go. Now we're good. Now everything's going to go it, flawless. It was the yeah. old inverted controls. That's right. Good. I'm a freak. <laughs> That's right. It is the right way to play. <laughs> Here we go. Easy now. Oh, mama. This is a more powerful bike than what I drove in the last build. Yes, this is an upgraded bike. Yeah. This looks gorgeous. So the uh, horde is back behind you, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. This game looks incredible. No strategy in this game is a bad strategy, but I'm going to say this is a terrible strategy. <laughs> the worst strategy. Yeah. So tell me, what, what, do I, uh, what do I have in terms of weaponry here? OK, well, so you, if you get off your bike, you can access your survival wheel. And um, on this, you're going to have your, your, you know, your weapons on the, in the cardinal directions. But then in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to have throwable explosives. In the upper left, you're going to have your consumables, which include things like your health, your bandages. Uh, but most importantly, kind of survival buffs. Things that will help enhance uh. your, your core attributes. And, you know, crafting one is going to take away from another, of course. So you've got to make choices that suit your play style. Um, and then also we have distractions on the bottom left corner. Not really the best for the horde, but on the bottom right we have traps. So in this case, I think you might have uh, proximity bombs or, or airbag remote detonators. I think, they're, I think uh, in this I case you have some the prox, uh, proximity yeah. mines. And if you plan properly and look through the environment, you find like key places that you say, I'm gonna, I want to run the horde through here later and trigger this detonation when enough of them run past it. So you can, smart players will do that. Foolish players will just charge in, guns a-blazing, and it's going to be a lot harder for those guys. What, what kind Most of player will players will be? will try to jam their bike into the horde. <laughs> they can try that. <laughs> so what's your strategy here, Sid? What, what are you thinking? How do I, how do I Stalling is yeah, a strategy. You've got it selected right there, and then <laughs> right, uh, hit R2 to... R2, okay. Oh, oh, no. oh <laughs> You can't melee the horde. <laughs> you can try. The strategy is panic oh. and run. <laughs> okay, we're on the move now. Lost my bike. Not good. You can still save it. I, I don't recommend a melee bat against these guys, but <laughs> let's give it a go. <laughs> got to stay nimble here. This is going to be uh, 10 minutes of me running from these guys, isn't it? <laughs> well, Sid's trying to make his way around. How do you guys plan for to. all they'll, of these different tactics that people are going to dive into? How do you think ahead of time of people are going to want to go about this a million different ways? So what's the process oh, of building man. out all of that? Well, we think about what makes kind of sense and what sounds cool that fits the IP, but we, we do have to provide a lot of different tools just so they can have that, right. that you know, the, the, that flexibility. And then we just try to keep things very loose. So that we're going to be surprised by a lot of the videos we see yeah. online of people playing this. We'll be like, wow, I didn't think that would happen. And when we've done that internally, we've been surprised about how things just kind of work. So, yeah. so we're supporting it by it's just. always the best part of games like this is just seeing how people get so creative. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, had a, we had a company meeting last week where our head of QA literally took on the horde using his crossbow and custom crafted explosive oh bolts. Oh my gosh. And it was pretty amazing. So he pretty much got all the way there. I think he had to use one Molotov, but Jeff and I had never seen that happen before. So we were yeah. surprised and we were like, oh. And what's cool about it, and I think this goes to your question is, um, we, it makes perfect sense that it worked because the way we built the systems, right. but it's, it, emergence is about a bunch of 
wholly oh. predictable, unpredictable things, and it just works. Like we're catching yourself catching on yourself fire. Catching yourself on fire is possibly a good <laughs> yeah. strategy. I think. That's so he can set them on fire when they grab him. That's yeah, yeah. That was the plan. Okay. This is so one of the things we're going to point out though is that the the horde locations are all story driven, uh -huh. and so this is a mass grave site. So Nero would have come in as the world was ending, dug these mass graves, and they happen to have giant barrels of fuel that they would have used to burn the corpses of all the people who had died during the pandemic. So. There's a reason yeah. why you find all these explodables out in these areas. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> there you go. One of the key strategies is to go and find those first, and then plan as you're running around to try to drag oh, the whole thing out of ammo. There you go. And in these encounters, oh. you really got to be thinking on your feet as you're running forward. For me to pieces, uh. I'm dying. I'm doing better though. I'm getting the hang of this yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's now I got it all good. figured out. But you want to scan the environment constantly, looking for new opportunities. Yeah. And it, a lot of them reveal themselves, but you've, you've got to be nimble, you've got to be moving, you've got to be thinking, and using the survival will, and just using every mechanical aspect at once to survive. And these are late game encounters. Okay. So you run into the horde throughout the game. Early on, you can't take them on. You're not strong enough, you're not fast enough, you, you don't have large enough magazines in your weapons. So you really learn you early on. You have to work on, your way up. Yeah, the, uh, how you're going to put them by the time the, you get to this mission. You would, have, you would have learned some of the strategies. There we go, there we go. Um, and, and you'll notice those logs right there. Mm -hmm. If you blow those open, they'll actually... One of the things uh, I think is great about this, okay. too, is that Release you also you have the cultists that are out there. So actually, uh, go to your uh, that are out lower right-hand corner, like 4 o'clock on your survival wheel. You have to be worried about. And so this so could bring possibly up the survival be a situation one. that you would maybe then go to the, use them to your advantage kind of four if there were other enemies around. Place that place thing on the barrel. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, you have one equipped, so hold those two. This is one of the late-game missions. There are open-world encounters And then when you trigger them, make sure they run past here. You have to go take on. If you see a horde nearby, you can be a Pied Piper. You can actually get on your bike, ride through the horde, Drag them up into the ambush camp, All right, and then watch gone. the mayhem that ensues. Oh my gosh! All right, here they come, Sid. Oh, <laughs> nice one. Nice. We got about a quarter of them. Front row. Front row. Oh, you're gonna have to Crazy. reload pretty soon, dude. Get, oh, run. Uh, get out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you. It worked for a while. It <laughs> did. It, I mean, we're making progress. Yes. We're chipping away here. <laughs> This is this is unlike anything I've ever played. I've never fought so many enemies at once. I mean, it's uh, it's really really interesting. Let's see here. I was digging these Molotovs. So one of the other things we wanted to point out is that we've been working really hard on performance. So if you saw the demo that we we released some footage last month, it was kind of alpha footage, and you know this kind of polish really comes very say, very late in the game. So, so the, this is like almost final lighting for the environment. The, Environment tech guys have been working really hard on that, but also performance is key for this game because it's running at a solid 30 here, and we have a version on the regular PS4 that's also running at a solid 30. So we're pretty go. happy with where we're at. All right. All right, it's on. Oh. 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 <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Nicely done. They're starting to fan out. Well, yeah, as you can see, they're starting to avoid the fire as well, so. Anything that's red is explodable as well. Keep moving, Sid. Short controlled bursts. Boom. Yeah, always oh, side run, side side run. red eye. Oh, oh no. Oh. And, and, uh, and that's oh. how we show it's alive. Yeah, <laughs> Sid, this was it. <laughs> I blame him. I did too good. Yeah. That was the problem. <laughs> All right, so you can see we still have some optimization. Yeah. <laughs> We're not yeah, coming yeah. out February, so. We still have some work to go. <laughs> you guys are coming out February 22nd, though. I'm sure you can polish that right up. This is it's a live fun. environment, though. I mean, that's, these things happen early in development. But, uh, yeah, that was super cool. I have never played anything like that. It was really, really unique. And, I mean... We're just obviously kind of goofing around here, you know, playing with the, the, the huge, huge, huge hordes. But, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game, and there's a lot of uh, emergent systems that come about, and you saw some of it here. I mean, every single time I tried that on, it was a completely different experience. Yes, exactly. And I know that's something that you guys are really focused on. I mean, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the, uh, the criers, the, uh, the freaker ravens that, that, that may choose to attack at one point or another. I mean, talk a little bit about how those systems sort of, uh, you know, combine with each other. The, the horde is just one part of the game, you know. Yeah. It's, it's uh, several, you know, it's an ecosystem of creatures.